Hey guys, Derek the Novice Gamer here bringing you yet another Witcher 3 Wild Hunt video and in today's video I will be going over what I feel are 10 essential tips to having a successful start in the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Now although these tips are geared towards beginning players and first time players of the game, they might also prove useful to those of you who have played the game but it's been a while since you picked it up. Overall I think that if you follow these 10 tips it'll give you a good start, a good foundation, a good base to being successful in this game. So without further ado, let's get into it. Tip number one, stick to the roads. The Witcher 3's world is a vast open world filled with all kinds and classes of monsters, humans, mages, sorcerers, sorceresses, towns, townships, etc. That being said, getting from point A to B in this massive world can be challenging and daunting at times. If you are a new player, try to stick to the main pathed out roads until you get familiar and versed with the areas, combat, and challenges this world provides. The tracking system in The Witcher 3 is a great system and you will almost always be able to get from point A to B by following the minimap in the top right hand corner of your monitor or TV screen. Now within that minimap, whatever quest you have chosen or marked, you can follow a set of white lines. Even if the white lines are going in the wrong direction of where the gold pointer is going that marks your quest line, always follow those white lines if you are new and they will always lead you to the destination that you are trying to get to relatively unscathed later on as you become a more and more seasoned witcher it will benefit you to go off the trail off the roads and just follow the arrowed marker to where you need to go and ignore the white lines it is there that you will run into random npcs side quests and get to really explore this awesome open world that cd project red has created for us doing so before you feel comfortable can sometimes mean a Fucking disaster by hordes of enemies attacking and swarming you when you aren't too comfortable with the combat or just falling off a cliff like a jackass like I did right here. Tip number two, loot everything. Now guys, when I say loot everything, I mean everything that you can pick up in this game, loot it. Stuff it in your britches, stuff it in your boots, stuff it in your gloves, stuff it in your top of your armor. Loot everything because everything in The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt has a purpose that you can loot and there is absolutely no reason to spend any money really on any type of resources and materials because you can pretty much find them out in the world everywhere that you go. Now a major part of this game, The Witcher 3's dynamics guys, is based on crafting. So the items you collect from looting are materials you will need to craft alchemy substances, alcohol, bombs, decoctions, oils, potions, weapons, armor, and crafting components. Now you can also buy these materials, like I stated earlier, uh, for crafting from merchants, blacksmiths, and swordsmiths. But in my opinion, free materials are always better than ones that you have to pay for and that are costly. Am I right? Free materials. Who likes free? I like free. Although, not much stuff in this world actually is free. But in this game, materials are free and bountiful. Plus, some of the items you gain from looting are items such as jewelry, candle bombs, um, clothing, pelts, that are can be sold for a pretty penny if you gather them up. And the weight system in this game, you don't really get overburdened that much in this game. I have never found myself to be that overburdened, because every time I get close to getting over one, I go and sell the stuff I looted and get a pretty penny back for them. A crown, actually. So, loot, 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 benefits of looting. Materials and crowns, baby. Materials and crowns. And let's move on to the next tip. Tip number three, use your Witcher senses. Who wouldn't want a gift of sense that enables you, like Joel in The Last of Us, to see through walls, to see those zombies with the white pulsing ore coming off them? Or Spider-Man and those spidey senses that alert him when enemies are near, when bullets are flying by him, whizzing by his head? Well, we have that in The Witcher, guys. Geralt has this. This unique gift is an essential and wonderful tool to not only have, but to use our Witcher senses, which alert us to things in the world we would not normally be able to see or notice otherwise. Now, our Witcher senses are going to illuminate objects with an orange hue around us in the world. Uh, red hue if they're a part of a quest or if they are an enemy. They're telling Geralt, hey bro, there's stuff in here. There's stuff in me. There's stuff over here. Come on over, press A, loot it, and take it all. Fill yourself up. Get loaded down with this goodness and this riches, my friend. Witcher senses also, like I just said earlier, can also detect life forms, i.e. the enemies, 
normal people, other NPCs with pulsing white orbs that come off them. If they are enemies and they are a danger to us, it'll be a red pulsing orb. But nonetheless, these Witcher senses are here to alert us, to let us know where good stuff is. So it's a free gift that we have right off of the bat, so you might as well use it. Because not only will you find stuff that's unmarked, that's not part of quest lines, but if you're out in the world running around and you're just bored, Click on them Witcher Senses. If you're on top of a snow and mountain in Skellige, click on the Witcher Senses. When you're in a tavern chatting up a strumpet, tap on your Witcher Senses. When you're running wildly through the woods of Kaer Morhen or White Orchard, tap on your Witcher Senses. Or if you're in a deep swim in the goddamn ocean, tap on your Witcher Senses and see what you can get. Let's move on. Tip number four, message boards. Message boards in The Witcher 3 provide a wealth of information that will help you level up as you progress throughout the game. They are located in all the major cities in The Witcher 3. Sometimes more than one message board will be available in a particular city, such as Novigrad, as it is a very big and expansive city. They are yellow colored on the map before you have discovered them, and then once you have gone and discovered what they have to offer, they will turn white, letting you know that you have gotten all the garnered information needed. Once discovered, they will lock undiscovered locations on the map in the form of question marks. These question marks consist of hidden treasures, bandit camps, and monster dens, all of which will provide you with great loot to line your pockets. These message boards will also provide you with secondary quests and witcher contracts, which pay out very nicely. I would suggest unlocking all the message boards, even if you don't complete every single thing that you unlock on an intended message board, at least all the locations will be unlocked, all the quests will be unlocked, and you can always come back at a later date and finish those said quests, finish those question marks, or finish those treasure hunts at a later time to collect your goodies. Let's move on to the next tip. Tip number four, know your enemy. Use the bestiary. In your time playing The Witcher 3, you are going to come across a ton of monsters. Now, these monsters fall into different classes, with several types of monsters in each class. Now, I'm not going to go over every single monster that's headed under each of these classes. I'm going to make a separate video on combat, that, which explains to you the best techniques to use to combat each class of monster. For the purposes of this tip, we're just going to go over the different classes of monsters, and the classes are as follows. Beasts. Cursed Ones, Draconoids, Elementia, Hybrids, Insectoids, Necrophages, Ogrids, Relics, Spectres, and Vampires. That is a lot of classes of monsters with about a handful or more under each class. Is there a way for me to tell how I can best defeat these monsters? And the answer to that is yes, the bestiary, what this tip is all about. The bestiary is a wealth of information, not only about the monsters themselves, but also about their vulnerabilities. Their vulnerabilities of each monster, knowing what oil to use, if you can use bombs against them, and what types of bombs, what signs are most effective against them, and what is not effective against them. The bestiary, my friends, will give you an edge, will give you a leg up on these monsters and help give you advantages to take them down more easily and to be a winning edge playing witcher. So take my advice and use the bestiary. Thank you. Let's move to the next tip. Tip number six, use those food items. It's free health. As you're perfecting yourself as a witcher, slaying monsters, taking on contracts, doing question marks, and making more of a badass in this world of The Witcher 3, your vitality or life bar is an important thing to keep a close eye on. As you move through the story and begin to use potions and decoctions that help specifically with vitality regeneration, there is some stuff that is free and that can be found everywhere and in plenty throughout the world. And it is tied to tip two, which was, if we remember, looting and it is food consumables everything from alcohol chicken legs fried meat chicken sandwiches raw meat potatoes olives and about a hundred thousand million more the point being isn't just an empty item each piece of food if consumed will grant you a specific percentage of vitality regeneration for a specific amount of time my three staples that i use for food are raw meat which you can get through killing wolves dogs wargs and an assortment of other animals honeycomb and water now if we look closely at this you can see four consumable slots that are available to us <clears throat> you can attach everything from potions 
to food in those slots. I like to have all my slots filled with four different kinds of food. And as you can tell, each kind of food has its own specific stats for how much vitality it gives you and for how long that vitality will regenerate. So remember, the next time you pass by some olives, the next time you pass by some honeycomb, the next time you pass by some water, don't just leave it there, pick them up. But not only pick them up, assign them to your quick slots, and not only assign them to your quick slots, but when you're in a pinch, pop some of that food. It might just save your life when you are low on health. Tip number seven, save your game manually often. When you are busy fulfilling quests, the game will automatically save your progress at certain checkpoints. But when you're out and about and exploring the wilderness, a quick hop over to the save menu can save you a lot of times if you're unexpectedly struck down by a powerful beast or accidentally fall off a fucking cliff. The good thing about manual saving it is that you can do it just about anywhere, as long as you are outside of conversation and not engaged in battle. With this in mind, one should definitely get used to hitting the options button and clicking save game. When you feel danger, it could be lurking around the corner, or you feel you're about to be coming up to a pretty difficult battle that you may or may not win. Make sure you jump back in and hit that save button. It only takes a second and could prove to be unspeakfully unspeakably useful and save you a lot of pulling your hair out and throwing controllers and cursing. Tip number eight, oil is your friend. Use your oil. Much like taking advantage of the bestiary to give you an advantage against your enemies in battle, oils will do the same for you. Oils need to be crafted, but once crafted are yours permanently and never need to be crafted again and never run out. You will need to find the schematics and or plans and ingredients to craft the oils, which can be done from using witcher senses, looting, or buying them from various merchants throughout the world. There are oils that pertain to each class of monster and give you a percentage of an attack power when applied to your weapon. Once crafted, use them oils to increase your attack power and take down them monsters that seek to take you down. There are three tiers of oil, basic, enhanced, and superior. Now, if we take a look at these three different uh, oils, we can see the basic gives us a 10% attack power, enhanced gives us a 25% attack power, and superior gives us a 50% attack power. That's some pretty serious percentage of attack power. I always like to use the bestiary in conjunction with my oils. Now, as you use the bestiary more and more, and this is where the bestiary and oils come together in a glorious union because the bestiary will tell you if and what oils you can use against each specific class of monster. And what I like to do, guys, when I go into a battle where I'm coming up against monsters, almost 95, 6, 7, 8% of the time, I will see what oil will pertain, if any, to whatever monster I'm coming up against. And I will always place that oil on my sword. Because of that extra percentage attack power, it's free. You never need to recraft it. It's always there. Just apply and go. Set it and forget it. Now, each tier gives you a certain amount of charges. Just reapply once you have used up a certain amount of oil, or if you come into a situation where you're fighting a different monster, just apply that oil that applies to that monster and it will overtake whatever oil you already have on there. So remember guys, next time you go into battle and you wanna get a little extra attack power, use that oil. It's unlimited and it is good. So use it, oil it up. Tip number nine, use your signs. Signs are another tool in a Witcher's arsenal, which should not be ignored or downplayed. Now later on in the game, as you get more versed and better at your craft of becoming a Master Witcher, you can tailor your playstyle or build to focus heavily on signs. For now, let's just get the basics of signs down. Now there are five signs in The Witcher 3, each having benefits and uses against enemies and in just regular conversation options as well. They are as follows. Ard a directed blast of kinetic energy that staggers opponents and leaves them open for an attack. Art is very useful against airborne enemies and enemies on the ground as well. If a harpy's swooping at you, if a drachnoid's coming down at you, art them, get them on the ground and get them open up for a kill strike. If somebody's coming at you and you need a little space, throw an art shot at them, knock them on their ass, or knock them silly and stun them. Either way, art will do you well. Igni. Igni is a directed fiery blast that damages enemies. The damage of Igni will scale with the sign's intensity. 
Sometimes you might need a little breathing room, and you don't want to just art them up. You want to see them burn. Boom, bam, bam, boom. This going for now. Boom, bam, bam, boom. Shoot out that ignion. Let them burn. Shoot out some ignion. Watch them burn. Yurden. Now, Yurden is a magic trap. Yurden will slow down enemies, and in some cases, especially in Wraith's cases, will bring them out of that superior ghost world. And when they get into your Yurden trap, it'll bring them into the natural world and leave them open for attack and vulnerable. Quen, one of my favorite signs. Quen is a protective shield that lasts until it has absorbed damage totaling 4% of whatever your maximum vitality is. So when you're going into a battle, and here's something that I will suggest. Every single time I face enemies, bosses, whatever it may be in the game that I need to get into a fight with, whether it's a human, whether it's a monster, I always have the sign wheel automatically always on Quen. When I'm going into a battle, I always throw on Quen because if you think about it, Quen is a free giveaway for you. You can get hit one, two, three times depending upon how, what level you are, what your Quen's built up to. But you can get hit a certain amount of times without taking damage with that free protective shield. So don't be afraid. Throw that Quen on and get into battle. It is a protective shield for you and it's there for you, much like the one in Bioshock Infinite. Finally, last but not least, Axie. Axie is a one that can make people dumb. Axie will charm an opponent's mind, temporarily eliminating him from combat. I like to use Axie against humans with shields. You can Axie somebody that has a shield, they'll drop their defense, drop their shield, and you can go to town on them. You can also use Axie to stun and slow down certain monsters as well, and they'll stand there like a drunken sailor with their head twirling around with white shining out of their head and give you an opening and an opportunity to attack them. Also guys, another thing that is connected in one of the tips, the bestiary and the signs are connected as well, much like the oils and the signs. The bestiary will tell you what signs will go with what monster and what class. So don't be afraid to practice around. Don't be afraid to use these things in conjunction, guys. Signs are another free kit and tool, even at the base level, that can help you gain an edge in this game. So don't be afraid. Use them. And the final tip, tip number 10, basic combat. So in this tip, we're not going to be going totally in-depth on combat. What I want to cover is kind of what Vesemir covered on the tutorial in Care Morhen. If you guys did that, if you guys are more experienced players, this will be old hot to you and you won't really need to go over this. But if you're a new beginning player, some of these things can be confusing on when to use dodge, versus a roll, versus a parry, what is a counter strike, how do I parry effectively. So we're going to be talking about those three things in combat. We're going to be talking about rolling, dodging, and parrying as well as counter-striking, which is a little bit more difficult to accomplish, but we will get into that. Now, further on down the line, guys, I will be making an in-depth series on combat as it pertains to each monster and how to use techniques for each class of monster and combats. But for now, let's just get into the basics of this right now. The first one we want to talk about is dodging. Oh, dodging. If you're playing on an Xbox, that dodge will be the B button, or on a PS4, it'll be the circle button. I'm not a PC player, so I don't know what dodge is on PC, but Dodge, I use very, very, very much a lot, even more than roll. Dodging allows you to avoid enemy attacks while at the same time still being close enough to strike the enemy without having to run back up to him. Use dodging to avoid incoming jumps, swipes, and all sorts of attacks. The roll. The roll is very effective. Use roll to give yourself distance and regroup yourself when you're in the heat of combat or a battle. Rolling is more quicker than dodging and will give you a larger berth, a larger width away from the enemy to where you can regroup, reassess, and pop some food, pop some potions, and give you some time to rest and recuperate a little bit. Parrying. Parrying is a very effective technique to throw enemies off, to stun enemies and open them up for an attack. Parrying is most useful for enemies that are carrying shields. Parry them, give them a quick bump, they leave themselves open for a nice sword up the gut. Now, pairing with monsters is a little bit different, and like I said, we will go into more depth on pairing and monsters when I do a, when I do my separate video series on how to combat monsters and such. Not every monster attack can be parried. Most of them can, but pairing will come in very nicely, especially against necrophages and counter-strike. The counter-strike is a very handy, handy, handy tool to use. Counter strikes can be effective, but are kind of tricky to use. You have to parry exactly before the moment something's about to attack you, 
what will end up happening is you will do like a counter slash. You will do kind of a parry and then come back with a counter slash and attack. Throw signs in between rolling, dodging, parrying, and counter striking to give yourself more space and to increase your damage and win the fight. All right, future witchers of America, there you have it. 10 tips for beginners or people new to the game or people just refreshing themselves with the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. I hope you guys found these tips helpful and useful. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, be sure to click that subscribe button and the bell notification icon. If you guys do want to support the channel, one of two ways you can do that, pop over to my Patreon or just click the join button and get access to perks for being a benefactor, a supporter of the channel. If you guys want to see more videos like this, including lore videos or more tips videos, let me know in the comments. Until the next time, guys, enjoy your day, enjoy your evening, and remember always, wherever you're at in this big, bright, beautiful world, whatever time zone you're in, I hope you're doing exactly what you're going to be doing for your life and that you're happy. And if you're not, make it so. Till the next one, guys. Peace.